Hi, this is Lisa Piper, and it's Freedom Friday here at the River. This is pre-recorded, so we won't be answering any questions. But I'm so excited to have my Alabama friend, Wendy Couch, on Freedom Friday. Hey, Wendy. Hey. Well, you had a post this week, and when I saw it, I was like, yay! It was so good about fear. If anybody had a reason to be fearful, like you said in your video, it should have been you. That's right. It should have been. <laughs> because so, you're, you and your husband are in full-time ministry. We are in full-time ministry. We've lived by faith for almost 24 years. We don't have a secular employment. We just totally live by faith. And then um, at the end of July, Daniel had an accident while he was in uh, Florida preaching a revival after the service. And so he has not worked um, since the end of July. He's had a TBI, which is a traumatic brain injury and some other issues. So he's not been able to work. So what I was saying in the video was that, um, you know, the Lord, I've done updates, you know, quite often just to try to keep all our friends and partners updated. The Lord's just given me a very special grace that I have not been fearful. I haven't worried about, you know, even though with all Daniel's issues, which have been very significant, um, haven't been afraid, haven't been whacked out about it, haven't worried about money, how we're going to pay the bills. I just, I really haven't been afraid. It's just been totally, totally the Lord, not been fearful at all. Well, because when you get the phone call, you don't know how he is, but not only about, not only knowing about provision, but he lost my sight and an eye and, you know, all of the things that come with a traumatic brain injury. So here you are not even knowing how life resumes to normalcy, but you are steady and peaceful. I'm steady and peaceful. I'm telling it was the most amazing thing. I've gone through a lot of things in my marriage with my kids and ministry and family. And there's been times that I have been overtaken with fear and worry, but not this time. It was just, it was very, very amazing. And I tell people, cause you know, we counsel people all the time. And I tell them the very best thing that you can do is to be prepared and close to the Lord before a situation happens. That way, when you get in the middle of it, you're already prepared. The road's already paved. And um, <clears throat> I really believe that's what happened in this case. I was already walking close to the Lord. Um, and so I just already had that peace. So when it happened, I just flowed right into it. So I love it. I love it. And I, he is the Holy Spirit is such a comforter. But then what happened this week? OK, so this is what happened this week. So. As I said, not trying to brag, but I've not walked in fear, which let me say this. In my family, we tend to be a family of warriors. Um, several of my family have ulcers. They've had to take nerve pills, things like that. It's just a curse that is in our family that we really have to work against. So this is probably something for me that I have to battle more than the common person, I would say. So through this thing with Daniel, no fear, trust in the Lord totally. Well, this week we got a call from a friend of ours that a mutual um, friend of ours, he's had COVID. He's been sick. We've been praying for him. Well, this friend called and said, look, he's taking a turn for the worse. It's really, really bad. You need to like pray immediately. Now, you would think that if anybody was going to be fearful, it would have been when I got the call that Daniel had been in this accident. It was on the way to the trauma center, but I was not. But when I got this phone call about our friend, like immediately, I was like the epitome of fearful. Like I got that sick feeling. I started shaking and I was like, this is the most ridiculous thing in the world. I knew immediately that it was the spirit of fear. It wasn't just your normal, you know, mm -hmm. I'm concerned, which I was concerned for the person. But it was a spirit of fear that overtook me enough that I became physically sick. So I realized, okay, this is what this is. This is stupid. I don't have to put up with this because this is not the spirit from the Lord. He's given me power over this. <laughs> and so I just stopped, you know, I regrouped, you know, I just prayed, get, got myself back in line, you know, and I just rebuked that spirit so that I could intercede for this friend. But I sure couldn't have done that wrapped up in that spirit that was trying to overtake me. So, yeah, it was ridiculous. The devil, he's just stupid. He he will attack at the most inopportune, stupid times ever. And that just happened to be one of them. So, so what happened when you stood up to it? Or is that what you did? Oh, yeah. Once I realized, you know, 
because a lot of times we don't identify what it is. You have to mm -hmm. identify what's coming against you and you have to call it out. Just like with your kids, you have to identify what they're doing, correct the behavior. That's what I had to do. I was like, okay, this is a spirit of fear. I bound, I bound the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. You know, I spoke that peace. I started speaking the word, which, you know, that's the key to everything, being in the presence of the Lord, speaking yeah. his word, because that's the words of the Lord. Those are forever true. That's what has the power behind them. And then I was able to intercede. But yeah, got to bind that spirit. Can't let that thing go. Then what was it like after you bound it? No, then I was good. I wasn't sick anymore. I quit shaking. And then I was able, because when that spirit of fear came on me, it wasn't just, you know, that physical manifestation of, you know, I'm shaking, I'm sick in my stomach. But it was like, I couldn't even pray for the poor guy that had COVID and had taken the turn for the worst because the only thing I kept seeing was, oh my gosh, he's my age. I'm just going to get this. What if I can't, you know, what if I can't make it through this? What if one of my kids get it? So that's just mm -hmm. how the devil works. He tries to distract us from the purpose and the plan, which was for me to pray for that guy. Because he obviously needed deep intercession at that time because he was so bad. But the devil was trying to get me on the what ifs rather mm -hmm. than that. And that's what fear does. Daniel mm -hmm. preaches a message and he talks about fear and that fear is false evidence that appears real. You know, yes, I could get COVID, but I don't have COVID, you know. So why am I worrying about that before it even happens? Because it may not. And even if it does, I have trust that the Lord's going to bring me, you know, through it. And if he does it, I know the Bible says it's a point on demand. Once to die and after this, the judgment. I'm either mm -hmm. going to be raptured or I'm going to go somehow. But it's going to be according to his plan. Amen, sister. Amen, sister. Let me just preach a little bit. <laughs> go, girl, go. <laughs> well, I know it has not been an easy time, even though you're in peace, even though there's no fear, watching your husband go through a trauma like that. You know, you've had to pick up some, some tasks you wouldn't normally do and live a certain way. But if people would like to find out more information about your ministry or even giving to your ministry, how would they do that? Well, we have a website, www.dedicatedchristianministries.com, that's kind of got all the information, the emails, the addresses. Um, I also have a personal Facebook page. It's Wendy Bruce Couch. You can private message me on that. I will say this also. We've lived by faith for 24 years. This will be 24 years, and God has always, always been faithful to us. And the way that God is faithful is by speaking to his children and his children obeying. And, you know, we've been without work for five months. Daniel just now started doing, um, taking revivals again. He's done one little small four-day revival, and that's the only work that we've had. But do you know that the Lord, he has taken such good care of us with his people. We haven't been late on one bill. You know, obviously you can tell by my little chunky face. Um, I haven't missed any meals and it's just the goodness of God. So he takes care of us. So you can get on our website to get our address, our email. Of course, you go through the church or my Facebook on Messenger and I'll be glad to send anybody information. I always tell people this. They're like, what do you need? And I was like, well, number one, I need you to pray that we stay in the will of the Lord. And if the Lord deals with you to send a letter, send finances, you know, you just be obedient to whatever he says. So, Amen. So Freedom Friday, not only can God give you peace when the enemy would like to give you fear, but he can also provide when there Absolutely. seems to be no provision. Absolutely. I He's a good, it. good father. <laughs> I love you, my friend. I love you too, sister. Thank you for letting me come on and chat with you today. Thanks for doing it. I know people are going to love to hear you.